Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we're going to talk about small businesses and how 90% of small businesses don't make a hundred grand per year. And we're going to talk about why. And this is one of the things that the corporate papers deals with. First of all, I'm going to make a very, very bold statement. Most of the businesses in America are not set up correctly from the corporate structure to the system and processes in, in the internals of the business. Many business owners struggle with one critical component that makes the difference between making $100,000 a year or a million dollars a year. And that would be hiring and management. That is the single biggest reason that so many small businesses are really, really small. And this is something that we deal with in the corporate papers. If you're looking to start a business and you want to have the proper corporate structure, which is important from a tax advantage setup, and you want to have the proper training on how to grow and scale your business. This is really, really important. At this moment, I have made more money than 90% of the small businesses in America, and it's only August. Here at August, I've made more money than 90% of the small businesses in it. And part of the thing is, why do I make so much money? I leverage the internet. YouTube is my employee. You, my YouTube channels are employees. So I have the Money Lab, I have Savage Finance, and I have Digital Money, which I'm bringing back on. So those are three employees right there. Then I have B-School for Hustlers. That's another employee, so that's four employees. And then I have Deanna, that's my fifth employee. And I have other systems and processes that, even though it, I only have one physical employee, I actually have seven employees. And this is one of the reasons that I make so much money. If you don't have an employee, you're going to seriously cap how much money you can make. And I'm gonna tell you why. This is a struggle that I'm going through because right now uh, I gotta go back to the DMV and I got to ask them because every time you buy a car, they ask for your driver's license to issue your tag. I've got to find a system and a process around that where I can hire someone to go get these tags. So this is one of the reasons. And let's talk about me and this car rental business. And also, I need to say this. You need to get in the corporate papers now. Stop waiting. And I'm gonna talk about why you need to stop waiting. The next four weeks, we're gonna get into heavy duty marketplace data. How to get the data, how to correlate the data, and how to interpolate the data. And this is gonna be a critical, critical component of your business. If you don't do this, if you do everything else right, you get your holding company structure right, and you don't do this, your business is not going to make nowhere near the money it could make, not even close. So go ahead, go below, use promo code AUGUST, and get in the corporate papers and be ready for Sunday. Sunday's training is going to be intense. We may be moving Sunday's training to Monday night. It just depends. Monday night football, you know, we're not, I'm not going to, do training on a night like that because a lot of people want to watch their football but it may be tuesday night and we're going to get into the training so go below get in the corporate papers right now all right so what i'm doing for the last three and a half months i've been in the car rental business i have spent half a million dollars starting my car rental business and I, me, I'm doing all of the work. I'm meeting the renters, I'm checking cars out, I'm doing all of the work and there's a really, really good reason I'm doing all the work. I am prepping to hire an employee to do this. Every day I have a little notebook and I write down stuff and I write down stuff. So when I hire my first employee, I'm gonna have them 
follow me. And also, I need, you know, I need to, I need it to be at a certain level of busyness because one of the things I'm going to do with this employee, they're going to work in the car business and they're going to work for Savage Finance. So when they're not doing car business, they will be working for Savage Finance. So they will be working all of the time. It won't be just like, I'm just sitting around here waiting for someone to come rent a car. Um, essentially, I'm going to tell you a little secret to the car rental business. Currently, I have 29 cars. I have one, two, three that I can't rent because they're wrecked. And I have three that I can't rent because they don't have the GPS system. That's six. The Mercedes goes out today. Um, BMW, Porsche, BMW, BMW. So I have essentially 11 cars that are not rented out of 29. And once I get some of these things fixed, I'm pretty much going to have 25 to consistently 25 cars rented. So once the cars are rented, it's not a lot to do if they're rented and there's someone in them. And this is one of the reasons that I do the things I do that will be in the car rental course. I'm going to teach you guys so much sauce, so much game. But I am doing all of this to create the training manual for the employee. And many people say, like, why don't you hire someone? How can I hire someone to do something that I don't know how to do? I was like, hey, Toby, I need you to do X, Y, and Z over there. So by the, you know, I figure I'm gonna hire my first full-time employee September, October. And this is someone that's gonna go through a background check, they're gonna go through a credit check, and they will be vaccinated. If you're one of those people who's like, I'm not getting vaccinated, you, it's going to be an ad that you must be vaccinated to get this job, and you must go through a credit check, you must go through a background check. I am probably going to hire, hire an older person, someone in their mid-30s to mid-40s to get that reliability and to get that work ethic. But I am prepping my car rental business because the way it is right now, now that we worked out all the kinks, uh, I saw someone left a comment that, you know, they've had multiple cars totaled and they've had people keep their cars for months, keep their cars for weeks and not pay them. That's a real thing. And I had to solve that problem. In July, I got pissed off. And then I just took action. I got all my cars back. Uh, I called the police on people. And currently, I don't have anyone who has my car who's not paying. And this has reflected greatly because so far I've made $13,000 this month and we have 12 more days. And some of those days are going to be $1,000 days. Some of those are going to be $2,000 days. So I probably will do 22, maybe 24,000 this month. And this is not with my, you know, everything ain't rented out. That's, that's the big issue. That's the big issue. So we're working on that. But right now, I am prepping Mac Daddy Autos to be a million-dollar company. And what did I just tell you? 90% of small businesses make less than $100,000 a year because they don't have employees, they don't have systems, they don't have processes. And this is something that we're going to drill into you in the corporate toolbox. I know many of you are scared. Many of you want to get into stock options because you don't have to have any employees. It's just you. You don't have to be responsible for anything. I guarantee you, and I'm going to say this, and this is going to be a really bold statement. I make more money than anyone you know doing stock options. And I will put up my pay stub to prove it. And, they ain't all, and see, that's the thing. The pay stub. There's more money that comes into disruptive asset holdings. I'm just choosing to leave it in the company right now. I'm only taking out the money that I pay myself, but there's more money. Where did you think I get the four hundred, the five hundred thousand dollars? I've only paid myself. My pay stub will be in the community section. I've only paid myself like two twenty one so far, and I have spent half a million dollars. Where did the other two hundred? Well, actually, 300, 300, almost 350,000. Where'd that come from? It came from the company. I can pay myself way more, but one of the things that business owners have to learn is how to keep.
keep their paws off the money. Because I leave the money in disruptive asset holdings, which gives me money for new opportunities. I'm not pulling all the money out, I can. And th this is why you guys really should listen to me. I know there are many people here on YouTube who are saying, you can do, you can do this. You can start this business, you can make this money. They're saying you could do it. And they're showing you business models, maybe you've never heard, they're showing you. But how many of them are actually showing you how to start and run a business? There's like, how many, like I did a live stream last night talking about marketplace data. Have you seen JT Hustles do a video about marketplace data? Nope. Have you seen JT Hustles do a video talking about hiring employees? Nope. And statistically, if you do not hire employees, if you do not create systems and processes, your average income as a small business owner is gonna be $71,000, which is gonna be twice what the average normal person in America who makes $30,000 a year. So you will be doing better. You will be doing a lot better. But guys, we're gonna be talking about creating million dollar and multiple million dollar businesses. I already have a million dollar business. I'm getting ready to create another million dollar business. I want you to understand the significance of that. I know the moist men like, Lyndon, you ain't that good. You ain't that great. You ain't no better than me. Actually, I am. I'm way better than you. From a fiscal standpoint, I'm 6'1". From a height standpoint, I'm taller most, than most of you moist men. And from a business standpoint, yes, I am better than you. And I have the results and the receipts to show that which is why you're so pissed off, you little moist little man. Bless his little heart, bless his little heart. But guys, I'm gonna give you real business tactics. This is going, the corporate papers when I'm done is going to be a collegiate level curriculum where you will go in, you're a regular person, you've never started a business, you've never had a holding company, you've never done any of these things before. The corporate papers is going to walk you through that process. First, we're going to get that corporate structure. That's very important because once you start getting into your business, you're going to be so busy. I, I, I got a confession, and this is really, really sad. I almost got my power cut off. True story. Um, I got so busy that I saw that bill and I forgot about it, and then I got this little postcard in the mailbox and I was like, oh snap. And I came in and I paid my power bill because they were supposed to cut my power off that day. That's just how busy you get as a business owner. It, it, it's kind of like, I had the money. It wasn't the issue of the money. It was the issue I wasn't paying attention and I was so busy. This happened uh, the f month two because I was working 12, 16 hour days. I was buying a bunch of cars. I was dealing with a lot of riffraff. And literally, I almost got my power cut off because I was that busy. And now we have pulled back because my days have become more scheduled. Because one of the things, and I've lost money, I'm not gonna, re I'm not gonna let you rent a car at 7.30 at night and meet you at 8, 8 9, 10 o'clock. I'm not doing that. Um, that's, that's crazy to me. And there are many people who wanna rent a car in the middle of the night or Sunday afternoon at seven, eight o'clock and come pick up the car. And I'm just sitting there like, you knew you needed that car. Why'd you wait to the last minute? So I don't even worry about those. But guys, in the corporate papers, I'm gonna teach you how to build a million dollar business. How can I teach you how to build a million? I've done it. And I'm in the process of doing it again. And I'm documenting the journey I'm going to put up on uh, the beginning of the month. I'm going to do my financial analysis, showing you how much I spent on cars, showing you how much I spent on repairs, showing you how much. This is why I've invested half a million dollars in my car rental business in three months. So I know there's many, many people here on YouTube who are talking about you can build subst substantial businesses with no money or very little money. Let me give you the 
the inside track on that. Can you start a business with no money? Absolutely. Can you start a business with very little money? Absolutely. It's 100% true. Here's the problem. Remember what I said, I'm probably going to make $22,000, $24,000. This would be my fourth month in the car rental business, my fourth month. I have watched enough Turo and hire car videos to know that it is taking the average Turo host two, three, four, five, six years to get to $24,000 a month. I did that in four months, or will be doing that in four months. I, I, once I get my final number, I'll let you guys know. Now, that ain't the good part. September, I'm probably going to do 30. In October, I'm probably going to do 35. In November, I'm probably going to do 40. And then December, I should be close to 50. Now, December will be my, let's see, we started May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Eight months in, I will be making more money than 99% of the people you see here on YouTube who are talking about how to do Toro, and they've been doing Toro for two, three, four, five years. That is the importance of starting with capital. Because I started with capital, I was able to scale very, very quickly. There are not a lot of hosts, because I'm between the regular people and I'm between the whales. The whales are people with 100, 200, 300, 400 cars. Those are the whales. And the average people, an average person may have five to six cars. And I'm in that middle space. There are me and a few other people. And essentially, next August, next September, I should have 100 cars, which will move me into the whale territory. So I'm going to be able to construct a business. And once we get to 50,000, then we get to a point where it's going to take me 10 months. Well, let's say 12, because we're going to have repairs, we're going to have insurance and other things. But guys, I am documenting the process. I am being blatantly transparent. I am giving you the good, the bad, the ugly, because the first three months, let's just go call the buck. They were ugly. They were ugly. They were ugly than Becky's little sister. They were ugly. And now this month, I mean, the Kill Switch Chronicles make it a little boring because the drama level has been, the drama level went from here to, it's like, I, I have no drama in the car rental business right now. And that's because I've learned a lot in the last three months. I have learned a lot. And going forward, I'm going to teach you guys how to structure your businesses. Let's say you don't want to do the car rental business. Let's say you, you want to start a security agency. I'm going to have specific how to start this business templates in the corporate papers. Let's say you want to do security. Say you want to do, let's say you want to start an auto body shop. Uh, this week, I'm going to get me a fleet account at Pet Boys, which is going to get me a discount and potentially some credit because I've been digging around. Mac Daddy Autos has a Paydex core, and that came from that Wells Fargo secured credit card. And Disruptive Asset has an 80 Paydex core Paydex core, because I have one, two, I have three business credit cards, and some other stuff has reported in there that I ain't even, was not even aware of. So... We're going to talk about business credit. Um, hear me and hear me well. If you have a 750 FICO score and you have $150,000 income, you can get you some serious business credit. If you have a 750 FICO score and you make $30,000 a year, you're not going to get that much business credit. And we're going to be talking about business credit, lines of credit. One of the reasons that I use cash was cash was a buffer because I've had some mistakes. I bought some wrong cars. I've had some, you know, I had some incidents. The Porsche got stolen. The Range Rover got stolen. And those two, I took two L's. On the Porsche, I only took a $4,000 loss, but not actually about two. I think the Porsche did about two before I went through this. The Range Rover, that's been my biggest loss. Romy Rome, riding around, refused to bring the vehicle back for 25 days. That will never, ever happen again. I took an $8,500 loss about that, and I'm 
contemplate suing him because of that. But he don't have no money. You know what I mean? He don't have no money. So it's very, very rough. But one of the things that I want you guys to understand and one of the things I want you guys to acknowledge is you can do this. You cannot do this on the felonious JT. I'm going to say it, felonious information. You can do it. You can do it. How can you do it? Where are the receipts? We don't even know JT Hustle's real name. You're listening to someone. You don't even know their real name. I understand he's a pleasant guy. He's got energy and he's a likable person. I get that. But also, I've been an entrepreneur for 23 years. And I can see bullshit when I, and I will call bullshit when I see it. And he puts out a lot of bullshit, a lot of bullshit. And what I am doing that is vastly different from JT Automations and Raised Entrepreneur and the Black Hustlers Club and all these other folks is I am showing you proof of concept. Currently, I'm gonna put my pay stub up there in the community section. I have made more money by in August, and I haven't even got my second paycheck this month. I made more money in August than 99%, 90% of the businesses in America will make this year. Look it up. Google how much a small business makes. Google the average size. And once you start getting into the $200,000 a year, this is why for my corporate citizens, the target is 250. Um, that's like 7% of small businesses do that. 7% of small businesses do 200,000 or more. So we're going to move you into the 7% as a corporate citizen. So guys, stop waiting, get in the corporate papers. Cause here, here's another thing. And I used to have this neighbor growing up, Sally Mae Jones. And she used to say something all the time that as a child, I really couldn't comprehend. She said, if you live old, if you live long enough, you're going to get old. And it's inevitable. If you live long enough, time is going to pass. And if you want to start a business and you're just waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting, you are screwing yourself. Because once again, unlike all of these other people on YouTube, it's like you can do it and you can do it in a few weeks. I'm going to tell you the truth. You're looking at a two to three year journey. And if you are 30 years old, by the time you're 33 years, 33 or 34, 35, you could be a millionaire. Let me say that again. If you're 30 years old and you get into corporate papers and you start your corporate empire journey, you could be a millionaire at 35. You could be semi-retired at 35. You could be living in a big bodacious house, driving whatever you want to drive. Your wife doesn't have to work. Your kids go to private school. You could be doing that. But here's the thing. You must take action now. Last October, I was like 290 pounds. I'm 255 now. I started alternate day fasting back then because of my heart attack and other issues. And I was like, we cannot blow up like that again. And because I started in October, we're rolling around here August, I have lost 40 pounds. But I had to start in October to get here now. So, guys, look at me as an example. I'm showing you, I'm giving you the truth, I'm showing you all the ugly stuff. And then when it gets beautiful, you're gonna be like, I remember when he was taking all those ales. I remember when people were keeping his cars. I remember, I remember. Now he winning. And just like I can win in time, so can you. But here's the thing, you've got to have the proper information. Because, let me go ahead and say this, YouTube is a personality-driven platform. There are people making crazy money because so many people like their personality, not because they're putting out helpful content. I said it before, I'm gonna say it again, the vast majority of, how, of business content on YouTube is trash. It's just trash. Is hype, is trash. And once again, fact check me. Go ahead and see what the average small business makes and you see that 90% of them don't make 100K. 
And the reason is they don't have staff, they don't have employees, and so many people don't want to burden themselves with hiring employees. I have, like I said, I gotta manage my employees, I gotta manage my YouTube channels, I gotta manage my training platforms, and I actually fire some employees. Hustlers, like Hustlers Kung Fu, lifeskills.com was an employee and becoming a corporate citizen was an employee and I got rid of them and I'm getting rid of some other employees because I'm managing my employees better. Many of you just got reached out this week from De Deanna about, you know, we're going to do, I haven't had the time to contact the designer that's on my development list, but we're going to get some swag and we're going to send it out to you and it's going to be this nice shirt. And once again, let me just urge, do not wait until the price goes up. Once again, I, I heard you guys last month, you know, I'm giving you a whole month to get in because the price is going to go up significantly in September. It is going to go up quite a bit. So you want to get in now, links below. Hopefully you enjoyed this little chit chat. Hopefully you have some good input. Looking forward to seeing your comments. This is Glendon Cameron, AKA the Apex Predator, because I will talk smack about any YouTuber that I think is trash. I have no problem with that, because I am that motherfucker. Yes, I am.